Hi, Fishy folks. This is Dylan from Veteran Aquatics. I know, I look a little bit different, but don't worry. I'm still Dylan. Enjoy this unboxing. Today, we're going to talk about acclimating fish. We're also going to do an unboxing from one of my friends, um, so you can see the type of fish that he has. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. We are at around 850. You guys are slaying the subscription. So keep it up. We're almost at a thousand. I can't wait. As always, I will see you in a minute. All right, so today we're acclimating fish. I'm gonna show you the way that I usually do it, but I'm also gonna tell you a couple of the other ways that other folks do it, um, or depending on the situation that you may wanna do it as well. But first things first, I wanna show you what I got today. So Michael, from Michael's Fish Room, sent me some guppies. Um, I was looking around for some guppies and he was kind enough to send me a couple. So, Michael's Fish Room, michaelsfishroom.com. If you want guppies or plecos, check him out. He's a really nice guy and he's got some really nice fish. Got some stickers. I will put these places. Don't worry, Mike. And we've got some guppies. All right, I don't know how well you guys can see them considering the light, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them in here, I believe. You can see that one really nice male. So Mike double bagged them. I don't think I can get this bag off without cutting it. So they're double bagged, so they were packaged well. It's still nice and warm out here in Pennsylvania. Mike's actually in Jersey, um, but the weather shouldn't be too different. They got here in two days. There you go. Maybe now you can see them a little bit better. And once that male colors up, he's going to be absolutely gorgeous. There's a couple really nice guppies in here, so I'm excited to grow these guys out and, uh, and get them going, get them breeding. So, acclimating fish. There's generally two methods that people use. Um, the first method is plop and drop and that's what I do. So pretty much um, I'll float these guys in the tank anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, let them get used to the tank temperature. Uh, once that's done, and I'll show you the process, um, I'll get a bucket of water, I will dump the fish into a, into a net that's over the bucket, that way I'm not getting any of the ammonia filled water into the tank. And then I'll go ahead and I'll add the fish from the net into the tank. The other method is what's called drip acclimation. So what you would do is you would take this bag with this water, put it in a small bucket, and slowly over time, over a couple hours, drip your water into it to acclimate the fish to your water. Um, I have never used that method and the only time I could foresee using that method is with a really sensitive fish or a fish that's really sensitive to certain water parameters maybe something like discus with discus I would probably drip acclimate especially because I have well water and discus are notorious for liking softer water that said most tank bred fish including discus can tolerate a much wider variety of water temperatures than let's say a wild caught discus because if you took a wild caught discus and dumped it into water that had a pH of 7.8 they'd probably be dead within the hour um, but tank raised discus are usually raised in slightly higher pHs they're not in water that's you know that low of a pH so they can tolerate more normal water parameters but let's go ahead and I will show you plop and drop so step one just drop the bag into the tank um, so this gives the fish a chance to acclimate to your temperature. Now these fish have been in a bag since probably either Monday or Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. Um, so their water is a little bit cooler. So this will give them a chance to slowly warm up. It'll warm up the water in the bag before I actually dump them into the tank. You don't want to temperature shock the fish if you know they've, they've been in cooler water or even warmer water. Right, so like even when you get home from the pet store, you're probably going you're gonna to want to do this. But you can see, uh, the tank's a little dirty. These are some really nice guppies. So these are Michael's Mutt Guppies. If you don't know, he sells all sorts of different guppies and pairs and trios. But he also sells Mutt Guppies. 
And mud guppies are exactly what it sounds like. They're just random guppies thrown together that have bred over time. Um, but the difference between Michael's mutt guppies and a lot of other mutt guppies is that Michael's mutt guppies are actually usually really colorful regardless of the fact that they're mutt guppies. So if you are interested in guppies, if you're interested in mutt guppies, make sure to check out Michael's fish room. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. Uh, I'm actually going to leave two. I'm going to leave one to his YouTube channel and I'm going to leave one to his website where he actually sells the fish. Again, Michael's a really nice person, he's a really knowledgeable guy, he knows a lot about YouTube, he knows a lot about fish. So if you haven't already checked him out, make sure to go ahead and do so. So we're going to let those fish float for about 10 minutes and then we're going to come back. So it's been about 10 minutes that the guppies have been floating in the bag, so I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how I do it. And Michael, this might help you, instead of that weird PVC contraption you have, just get a bigger net. See? Big net. No PVC contraption. Alright, so a couple of things to remember. As soon as air comes in contact with this water, um, the bag's going to start to fill up with ammonia. So you generally won't want to leave the fish in an open bag. All right, so just like that, all the fish are, are out, they're looking good. Let's go ahead and dump them in the tank. All right, now the fish are added to the tank. You can see that, that really pretty male back there. He's a little washed out from shipping, but even so, I can tell that he's gonna be an absolutely stunning fish. There's a nice little female down here. Then there's a couple, that one looks like a female. There's a juvenile over there. And there's a couple in the back. So like I said, these are mixed mutt guppies but they will produce beautiful, beautiful offspring. Michael's mutts are some of the nicer mutts that I have ever seen. So yeah, guys, it's, it's literally that easy to, to acclimate most fish. Uh, like I said, the only time I would drip acclimate is if it was something that was really touchy with water parameters. And the only thing that comes to mind when I, can, when I think about that is discus. Um, and like I said before, even now, most tank-raised discus can tolerate a pretty wide variety of water parameters. So even then, eh, I don't know, discus are pretty expensive, so if and when I do discus, I will, I will try drip acclimation and see if it makes a big difference. Now, part number two to acclimation is quarantine your fish. Let me say it again, quarantine your fish. If you're getting fish from somewhere that... I don't know, let's say a pet store, right? Let's You got your fish from a pet store, you got them from Petco, and you add those fish to your tank, there's a good chance that one of those fish are going to be sick, and it can end up making your whole tank sick, and that's the last thing you want. Now, step two to acclimating your fish is to quarantine them. Let me say it again. Quarantine your fish. Now, the fish I got from Michael, I'm 100% positive that they're not sick, they don't have ick, they're not going to transfer anything to my tanks. They did go in their own tank, um, but if they weren't, I, I probably wouldn't have any qualms about putting them in with other fish. But most of the time, when you don't know the person that you're getting the fish from personally, quarantine your fish. Have an extra tank set aside. A 20-gallon tall works great. Um, they're good enough to hold a sizable fish for a short period of time. To give you a chance to really evaluate the fish, and to see if there's anything wrong with them. Watch them, watch your fish. If I could give you one tip in the hobby to help keep your fish alive, watch your fish. They will tell you and they will show you if something's wrong. If they're gasping for air at the surface, you know something's wrong. If they have pine coning scales, you know something's wrong. If they're sitting you know, in the back corner of the tank and you have a tank of cichlids, you know somebody's probably getting bullied. All right, so watch them. Um, I just came in here, it's later in night, and I was just checking on the guppies to make sure everyone was doing good, and they are. There's none dead, they're swimming around, 
they ate almost as soon as I put them in the tank. So Michael has really, really healthy fish. They're, they look great and they're not sick, which is awesome. So again, if you're looking for guppies, link down in the description below, check out Michael's fish room. Awesome guy, super nice guy, really, really high quality fish that he will ship you that won't be sick and they'll look good. All right, guys. So that's it for today. That's all I have for you. Um, if you found this video helpful, let me know down below what method you use to acclimate your fish. Uh, or if you do something entirely different, let me know down below. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Again, guys, you're straight killing it. We're well over 850 subs. We're almost to 1,000, and it's a really awesome feeling. So thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully, thank you for subscribing, and I will see you next time.